everyone, it's me, Xcanadensis, and today I'm going to be doing a comparison of my $150 Elsa doll here, the limited edition doll that came out with the movie, and my $10 doll that came with the deluxe Frozen 2 set. Um, both of these dolls are from the Disney store, but we're just comparing the two different releases of the same um, character design, I guess? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the $10 version. I got her on, I got her for even less than $10 because I got her on the Black Friday sale, but the normal retail cost is around $10 to $15. So basically 10% of the cost of this one, which retails for $129 with tax and shipping, that's around $150. So this doll, her face isn't my favorite. I definitely prefer the original Elsa face. I'm not usually one to be like, I, will, I like the original better. But I just think this face matches Elsa better than this one. Um, but that's not to say this is a bad face at all. I think it's really beautiful. I really like the the delicate eye makeup. I think the expression is very cute. I do really like the way they did the braid. I think it's very clean. <laughs> I think it's very clean, and the the weird extra hair Elsa has is done well, as well as the tiny little curl that she has. The hair and face are totally fine. I like them a lot. Moving down, the outfit is one piece, unfortunately. Um, this is this jacket doesn't come off to reveal the dress underneath, which is such a shame because Elsa wears the Elsa removes the jacket and just has the dress underneath on. But I believe the Disney store does have a doll of just the underdress, so it's totally fine. And this is a ten to fifteen dollar doll. Um, I'm actually going to draw your attention to the back because this is one of my favorite parts of this doll. She actually has this iron-on glitter thing on the uh, epaulettes of the dress, and the capes are nice. They're not hemmed, unfortunately, and I'm already seeing slight fraying, but I'm an adult collector, so these will probably hold up just fine. I do wish that they were finished a little bit better, like they could burn the edges or something at least, um, because I feel like... These doll, this specific doll is definitely made for kids, or definitely intended for kids, and I feel like that would be very frustrating to have your doll get ruined. She also has the glitter detailing on the front as well. The construction of the garment is really impressive. I think the pattern is really nice, and there's, there's even darts in it to make it fit even better. The belt is nice. It's not embroidered. It's just um, printed on. I don't believe it comes off. Yeah, it doesn't come off. It's sewn on, but it kind of gives you the illusion that it comes off. Same with the jacket. It really looks like the jacket will come off, but it's actually just really good pleating. I don't mind that. To be honest with you, I actually vastly prefer the outfit on this one, and I'll get into that later. The underdress is actually my favorite part. It's this really delicate, like, applied glitter. It's even hemmed at the top and bottom, and the glitter has a gradient here and has snow falling off. It truly looks like snow. It's absolutely amazing. Look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? I love it. I've, I, it's just executed so well. I was really impressed by it. And then the jacket itself is just printed. Like this whole piece is just printed to be the exact design. I don't mind that at all. It has the little, I don't know what to call it at all. The kind of icy looking design printed on. It's hemmed at the bottom. Looks great. Um, and then she does actually have the leggings underneath, which I was very impressed by because you can't see them at all. There are more of leggings than pants on this doll, but I don't mind that either. I think the leggings is the leggings look is a lot better than the pants look, to be honest with you. Um, and then I love the boots. They're really nice. They are not reflective at all, uh, but they're really well painted, and I like that. So overall, this doll is really, really good. I think she's really, really good representation of the character. And now we move on to the $150 version of this outfit. This is the 17-inch limited edition doll for the for Frozen 2 Elsa. This doll to me is definitely meant to look like the movie poster, especially in the face. One thing that I'm majorly disappointed by, which this doll also has that problem, but on the bigger doll with the bigger face, I would expect it to be better. She doesn't have freckles! Isn't that weird? Um, I do like that her face has blushing, which this doll does lack. And I think it would add a lot if this doll had blushing, but she has blushing on her nose, her cheeks, and even inside of her ears, which I was very impressed by. And of course she has 3D rooted eyelashes. 
I think the face is fine. I wish that it wasn't so perfect, the movie poster, because as somebody who actually opens the dolls, it makes her less versatile, but I understand completely that most people leave them in the box, so this is... And it is a beautiful face, I really like it. I prefer this face to this face, but not by too much. Um, moving on, obviously this, well, surprisingly, this doll has embroidery and rhinestones, which one of my favorite things when I was watching the movie, and one thing that made me really excited about the doll as I was watching the movie, because that was before I knew, or I had looked really into this doll, I was really excited about these details because in the movie they looked so good and they really executed it well. The back of the dress is really nice. I love the capelets. This, and the bottom of the cape on this one also has embroidery and rhinestones, which I love. I think the best part of this entire doll is this cape. Um, so it's going to go downhill. And then there is actually embroidery on the jacket piece. It is actually a removable jacket on this doll, which I'll show you. And she does have rhinestones and embroidery on the jacket as well. I think the jacket is well done. Like, it, it looks nice. It is accurate to the character. I think the jacket and the cape are both really nice. Then you can remove this belt, which does also have rhinestones and embroidery on it. But when you remove it, you can get to the underdress. This underdress is an abomination, in my opinion. I hate it. It looks bad on the doll. It... They picked this weird sequin thing and then organza on top, so there's just this really harsh line where it's supposed to be this delicate fade into her skin. I wish they'd just gone with this harsh line and left out the organza. The sequins are just weird. They don't make me think of snow at all. And then I hate this embroidery piece on this belt. I don't... It just does not look good in my opinion. It just clashes. And then... Um... There's another harsh line here. This is my least favorite part. Like, I could tolerate the top, I could tolerate the belt, but this is just egregious down here. The sequin dress just stops with this harsh line with hemming. And it, like, it's very noticeable through the dress. And then there's just this organza that's also hemmed and really noticeable. They should have burned that edge. I don't know why they didn't. And then you have this, like, they try to save it with some more embroidery, but it's just not great. It's, that's the biggest thing on this doll is that I hate this underdress. When they went out of their way to make sure that if you unboxed the doll, you could remove the jacket, it feels criminal <laughs> that this dress is so atrocious. Um, this jacket actually has an inner lining, which is really good quality. She has the under tights. They're fine. I don't like the color as much on this doll, but you can't really see them. And then the dress ends right at the boots and it's not as glaring on this doll because there's that fade but on this one it's this harsh line and then it just goes to boots it just makes her look weird and like really short and just I don't know do you see what I mean my flash turned off so apologies about that I can't turn it back on her boots are also iridescent um but about the same as this doll except that the stalls are not iridescent um and then I do like that the belt comes off, of course. That's nice. Um, so yeah, that's it for these dolls. The reason I wanted to do this comparison is because I was so blown away when I opened this doll by how well executed the underdress is versus this one. Although this is probably cheaper and a lot simpler, it looks so much better than this one, in my opinion. I just think this one looks messy. And I, I love the base doll and I love the jacket, so it's such a shame that this dress completely takes away from that. I'm kind of hoping, because I um, have a cutting machine and could execute it, that I just can make this in this size and just completely save this doll. Because this underdress just really doesn't cut it for me. I don't know what they were thinking. I feel like these two dolls had completely different design teams, and this one ended up being executed a lot better in that aspect. Um, so, I, I, of course, I believe the better value is this $15 doll. She's really, really great. She's beautiful. She's fully articulated, just like this one. I kind of forgot to mention that. Um, and if you get the deluxe set like I did, she comes with little accessories like Bruni and extra outfits. This one is beautiful, and if you're going to leave her in the box, I think that's for the best. I think out of box, this doll really struggles to stand out. But she's still a beautiful doll, and... <laughs> I feel bad because usually I don't have critiques, so people take that as me just bashing. But I think it's important as a person to have opinions and respect other people's opinions. And 
Um, I understand if you feel completely differently and really like the way that this dress was executed. I won't be, like, offended or anything, but I just wanted to say my piece unto this world. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye!